Let me tell you, let me tell you. Years ago, years ago, when the attorney told me to hide, just hide until amnesty happens. And one day I went to my mailbox and I just saw something. I said, hey, they remembered me today. They should just forget me. And I opened it and I saw a card. The way my dad said, Le prana ko se te ke mama la baya do se kata. My wife said, What is going on? I said, Le kat. The most was saying, What is going on? The most said, Ra ka 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 the way you will dance when that good news comes, are you ready to do it this morning? Because that is how it will happen. Go ahead, go ahead, come on. Now, this morning, child of God, you have done something prophetic. Now you're going to release some prayers. And that night, the king could not sleep. There was a man that was about to be decorated with the garment of congratulations. But the man was forgotten. And the man could not pass, pass through that gate to the king. But God, who dwells in heaven, uh -huh. he said, this man must be congratulated. Who is that person here this morning? Yeah. And it happened. A king who was having air conditioned, who has summers blowing him, because he refused to release that man's congratulation. Bible says he could not sleep. Raise your right hand up this morning. In the name of Jesus, every power holding my congratulation. I release divine congratulations. I release divine congratulations. Go ahead. I release divine congratulations. I release divine congratulations. That application. Whether it's in the immigration office. Everyone that has put my paper on review for two years, three years, four years, whoever that officer is. Divine pressure, divine pressure. Everyone that has rejected my case, divine pressure, divine pressure, divine pressure for that job. That job, they said we'll call you back. One week, two weeks, three weeks. They moment of their mind. What do you do? Divine pressure in the name of Jesus. Divine pressure in the name of Jesus. Divine pressure in the name of Jesus. I shall be congratulated. 
I shall be congratulated. It's my season of congratulation. I shall be congratulated. Nothing will stop my congratulation. Nothing will stop my congratulation. For somebody here this morning, you said, Pastor, this is December. Ah, it does not happen. I release back to back congratulations. 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 When the Lord turned again our captivity, we were like those that dream. <laughs> Hear me. Then the heathen came together. They had a town's meeting. Then my enemies came together. They had a town's meeting. They said, Sister B, see what the Lord has done for them. See what the Lord has done for them. I decree in the name of Jesus that those who don't like you, they will seek your congratulations. They will seek your congratulations. God will give you a reason to be congratulated. Now declare boldly, I shall be congratulated. Before the end of this year, I shall be congratulated. Oh, Matoshika to Mahalabo. It's my season of congratulations. The apostle over this commission, our Father in the Lord, Pastor Jerry. All through this week, he has been clearing it. Say it's a season of congratulations. It's a season of congratulations. And yesterday, people were congratulating us for streams of joy in Maryland. Congratulations will not cease in your life. Congratulations will not cease in your life. Jesus Christ turned water into wine. And the Bible says this was the beginning of miracle. It's one congratulation will meet another congratulations. One congratulation will meet another congratulation. Does he say, ah, see what God has done for you? Another one is coming. It shall be back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. Congratulations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody will kill your dream. You say, you see that dream? Here comes that dreamer. Let us destroy him. Let us kill him and let us see what will become of his dream. Every conspirator, they will wait forever. They will eat their own word. They will see you rise. Why they are sitting down, they will see you rise in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, because every word spoken here is a sure word of prophecy. It's not an empty word. And for everyone under the sound of my voice that has stamped every of this declaration with an amen. Father, make it their evidence. Make it their testimony. Let it be the reason for their congratulations. In the mighty name of Jesus. While you're still standing, oh God, help me for the few minutes we have left. Amen. Our text for this morning going to be taken from Luke chapter 15. I read from verses uh, Luke 15 from verses uh, 11. Yeah. Luke 15 verses, one second. Luke 15 from verses 11 to uh, 31. All right. Is it projected on the screen? All right, can you hear me? All right, okay, let's read together from verse uh, 11. Together, church, one to go. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Give, the, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So, And there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land. But when he came to himself, he said, 
how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. That word is to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his son, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Let us eat and be merry. Now his older brother in the field, as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music. Amen. I want us to read verse 12 again. And let me just read. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Mark the word, child of God. So he divided to them his livelihood. So one day, a boy who had nothing, all of a sudden, all of his father's property, he became the owner of half of it. In some part of the world where we come from, they will say, a lot has come. <laughs> I believe at that point in time, they were saying to him, congratulations, you have made it. He was handed over half of his father's estate. That was congratulations to somebody. Everything the father has lived for, because of the love of the father, it was given to him just for asking. But this morning, what the congratulation or no congratulation is already it has already happened. Amen. It's a season of congratulations. Amen. But when this congratulation happens, I want to talk to you today about seven mistakes. Seven destiny mistakes that truncate congratulations. Where they will look at your life and they'll look at the congratulations of yesterday. They will not say, oh, I'm sorry. That will not be your portion. Yeah. That will not be your portion yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, I ask this morning that it will be all of you and none of me. Every word you have tailored for every single individual here this morning. I ask your God that it will come without delay. It will come without obstruction. It will be a seed that will be planted, rooted in their heart. And the purpose for which that word is spoken, it will bring results. It will bring direction. It will guide them. It will establish them in their season of congratulations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Again, we welcome all of you that uh, showed up here this morning. And uh, 
also our online viewers. Come on, let's appreciate our online viewers. Some on Zoom, some on YouTube, some on Facebook, they're out there. Every Sunday, Thursday, they join us. We just want to appreciate, we want to tell you, we love you and we don't take your coming here for granted, whether online or in person. I truly love you and I send my greetings from uh, the Apostle of this Commission, Pastor Jerese. He wants, to, he wants to know that he loves you. He is looking forward to be here next year. And I was so, and, and I was so curious, uh, three days ago I asked him, so how long will you stay when you come this time? So he said, well, like, I'll be here for like two weeks. So we're going to have him, uh, by God's grace, before uh, sometime our anniversary. He'll be here for two weeks. So we're going to have all of him. We're going to be having NSPD from this place. We're going to have... We're going to have the NSP from this place. So you don't have to be in your house again. Uh, and I told him, I said, in this place, people will actually come in the night. <laughs> he said, ha, ha, ha. I said, you, 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 you don't know us there. People can wake up 1 o'clock in the a.m. in the morning. Uh, they will come here. <laughs> they will come here. I said, you come and see what they call NSPDMs. <laughs> the real NSPDMs. I, I don't know where we're going to use when it comes. Uh, but God will help us. I know we're somewhere outside there. I know it's not this place. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen and amen. Seven mistakes that truncates a man's season of congratulations. I want you to write this money if you can. The Bible says a certain man had two sons. And they didn't say their age. So, so two sons just appeared before their father. They didn't say their age. But they came to make a demand. And one of them said in our text for this morning, in verse 11, and the younger said to his father, Father, give me the portion that falls to me. So the father divided his livelihood between them. It was not the older one that made the demand. It was the younger one. What the father gave to them was livelihood and a lot in their bank account. And these days, people don't, people don't call it a lot anymore. When it's so massive, what do you call it? Alarm. <laughs> yes, you know, like we had an alarm this morning. There's one alarm, it's just yourself, but there's an alarm that everybody will hear. God will give you an alarm in your finances. You know, alert yourself will just hear it. Hmm, alert, okay, okay, okay. But an alarm, everybody will hear it. Hey, hey, hey. Your friend, uh, you know, Zuja, I stuck with you. <laughs> Don't forget me on your kingdom. Oh. That's what they call alarm. So this boy, he got an alarm. An alarm that made noise. An alarm that you call congratulation season. But one of the first destiny mistakes this man made in verse 12, he said, The younger of them. He was young. He was not matured. What he was asking for, he has not grown up to it. There are some of us here, the things we are asking for, if God put it in our hands, it will kill us. And that pride will just be on our shoulder. Nobody can talk to you anymore. There are some people, oh God, I want marital favor. If God give you that spouse, you will destroy the destiny of that spouse. Because you have not grown yet. So God is just saying, I want you to grow. To handle this blessing. I'm not a wicked father. I'm a loving father. Like what you see, there's no one that cannot climb down to give you what you want. But I want you to grow. What you are asking for, you have not matured to handle it. If I give it to you, hey, you will kill yourself. So let me just leave you where you are. Let us watch you grow. Let us let time. In the message transmission, he said, give me what is mine right now. No, no, no. Give me what is coming to me right now. So he will not mature and wait. For what does it come to him? He said, I'm forcing. Give it to me right now. And the Bible says he was young. Child of God, listen to me this morning. One of the seven uh, destiny mistakes you make that will control your, your congratulations in this, you, uh, you have not matured to your next level. You have not matured to your next level. 
Some of you are asking for, I want a new environment, a change of environment. Shift my seasons, shift the atmosphere. I want kings to come to me. I don't know no, those kings, they're not friendly. Kings are not friendly. He didn't say kings will come to you. He said kings will come to the brightness of the horizon. Is your light shining? Kings don't come to a way there's no light. He said, and kings will come to the brightness of your horizon. Where is the light in you that won't make, won't, want to make a king step down from his throne and come to you? What is that in you that will make people come to you? What is the attraction? What is the wisdom people have heard about you that will make the queen of Sheba travel thousands of miles to come and see you? Child of God, to maintain your congregation season, you must grow to your next level. That means you have grown already. So the weight of the blessing will not make you run crazy. The weight of the, of, of the blessing will not make you lose your mind. Tell somebody, I must grow. I must grow. But that is to stand before the king. And they showed up. You know, there are kings today that when they come, when they come to him, they don't play. When Joseph showed up, he wanted to come to school to learn how to interpret dreams. He already prepared how to interpret dreams. Now, ah, Joseph, come here. This is my dream. This is my dream. Tell me what it is. Right there. The guy opened his mouth. This and this and this and this. Is there any man who is as wise as Joseph in this land? Joseph came prepared. He has grown to the level. He was not just a prime minister overnight. He was already a prime minister before being prime minister. They said, is there any man who is as wise as he in this land? They looked at that. Nobody. There was vacancy. They said, Joseph, you are the man. Grow to the level you are going. Mature into the level you are going. Have you seen children? You come, you look at them, you say, wow, this one is an old soul. Because their wisdom is higher. It's ahead of their age. Kind of God, you must grow. You must mature. Some of you have to grow in grace. Scripture says, grow in the grace of what of our Lord and Savior. Jesus said, grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Daniel, in fact, there are some kings that will not even tell you their dream. They say, like Daniel, he said, tell me my dream and interpret it for me. You must grow to your next level. Your inability to go to your next, to your next level, when they hand over to you, your immaturity, you will destroy what was supposed to be a source of joy. That's the first thing this young man made. He was too immature. The second destiny mistake that will truncate a destiny. Scripture says in verse uh, 31, we didn't know, we didn't know that this was a man's problem, this young man's problem, until when the brother was saying in verse 31, and he said to him, in verse 32, he said, son, he said to him, son, you are always with me. Well, let me back to verse 30. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, with what? Harlots. So we now know, we now know the problem of this young man. He didn't devour his life with pastors. And he didn't see the offering in church. <laughs> the only people who enjoyed the alarm he got was harlots. Those were his circle of friends. Second destiny mistake that will truncate your season of congregation is your relationship cycle. Your relationship cycle does not add value to your life. Make a demand. He sees that you must have a friend, friends who will add value to your life? Friends who all they want is fun, 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 fun. Nothing else. They don't add value to your life. You know, like this commercial or this thing on Instagram that has gone viral in Nigeria. Any money I get like this, now enjoyment. Any change, now enjoyment. Excuse my French. Any money I have is enjoyment. Don't worry about my future. My future will worry about itself. Be careful of those kind of people. <laughs> Any small things, enjoyment. Look, be careful of your relationship cycle. Are they adding value to your life? People 
come to your life, by the time they finish talking, you can't break. You'll just be heavy. Are they adding value to your spiritual life? Are they encouraging you? For some of you, if you are the smartest in your circle of friends right now, you need new friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying something, right? You need new friends. If you are the best in your friends right now, you need new friends. His friends were just had us. And they devoured everything. And you only invite them by the harlots. When he became broke, they had to look for new customers. <laughs> sharp, sharp. <laughs> <laughs> so his relationship cycle was not adding any value to him. Somebody, and they devoured everything they had. His destiny became wasted. Somebody prayed this morning. Lord, help me. My destiny will not be empty. My destiny will not be empty. Everywhere I've made mistake in my destiny, Lord, show me mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Everywhere I have made mistake with the opportunity you have given to me, Lord, show me mercy. Show me mercy, Lord. Father of God, there are certain people you must have in your life. In your relationship with people, there are certain people you must have. You need a Paul who is a mentor. You need a Paul in your life who is a mentor. A Paul you can call. Not, you know, some boy not to be wayward in church. They say, I have a mentor. He's one line, one guy 10,000 miles away who your wife cannot even call when you're going crazy. That's not a mentor. <laughs> not because you're trying to hide so that you can misbehave. Paul was a mentor. He told them, say, you are partakers of my grace. As a mentor, you must have a protection. You must have a Timothy in your life. People who are learning from you. These are people who should be in your circle. Hey, pastor, when I pray, I say, Pastor GT, I say, God, give Pastor GT Barnabas, source of consolation. No matter how smart you are, you need encouragers, the Barnabas of ministry, the Barnabas of life. No matter how smart you are, there are times we come down. Even David, he cried until he cried no more. At that point, then you need in your circle, you need the Barnabas of life. People who will encourage you. You need people who can help you. People like Stephen, a man full of the Holy Ghost of power, a man of faith. But when Peter, the pastor, had a problem, he had people like Stephen who could serve. They say, Pastor, those who have been praying and reading the word, we, all these small, small things you are doing, all this capital, this, you know, we will take care of it for you. We we'll make sure you don't suffer. You need the Barnabas in your life. People will say, is this money problem? Don't worry. Bible, Bible says, and Barnabas sold a piece of land and brought to the feet of the, the Apostle Peter. You need those people in your life. You need those who can serve you. You need Nathans in your relationship cycle. People can speak the truth to you in love. David was a king, but in his cycle, the three mighty men, nobody could confront him. And tell him, David, this is wrong. This is another man's wife. But you need the Nathan who will come and, and in love and wisdom say, Yes, yeah, David, you are that man. Who oh, really am that man? Yes. Because you took another man's wife. You need Nathan in your relationship cycle who, who, who can speak the truth to you in love before you destroy your congratulation seasons. You need roots, you need people who are loyal. People who are loyal. People who will walk with you to the very end. Ruth was loyal to Naomi. Naomi told you, say, people know you that you are a woman of substance. That you are a faithful woman. Say, wherever you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Never walk alone in life where you don't have a root you can call. A friend who is loyal. Check your circle of friends. Check your relationship circle. And then you can say, this are loyal to me. You can say, no matter what my mistakes, but this one, those are loyal. Loyal people. You need roots in your life. You need Andrews in your life. Andrew was not the first person that met Jesus. But Andrew was one going everywhere to say, ah, come, come, have you seen, have you seen, have you seen, come, come, come and see, come and see, come and see. People will call us to you. This man 
His problem was that he had people who were not adding value to his destiny, who were not adding value to his life. Child of God, so that you don't truncate your, your congregation season, insist that people around me, they must add value to my life. They must add value to my life. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. Number 13, that happened to this man. I'm going to just run through this. You know, this man, when he has finished everything, he's, uh, he has squandered it, it has been devoured by harlots. Bible says in verse 14 of our text this morning, it says, when he has devoured, spent everything, there arose a famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Imagine what? He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And when they describe the citizens of that country, they talk about what was said. Hear me, child of God. And this man sent him into his field to feed swine. What was going between the citizen of this uh, country and his father? They both owned fields. They both owned field. No, no, what? They both owned servants. But when this man, when his senses became correct, but he was in a place where this man looked like his father, but was less than his father. The man was a wicked man. The man who we said to go and feed the swine. He said, but he will not give you food. The man never looked like his father. The man was never his father. He only looked like his father. One of the destiny mistakes we make, child of God, is this. You settle for what looks less than God. You settle, than, you settle for what looks less than your father. The man was always settling for less. There are people today, when they have issues with their spouse, instead of running to God in prayer, they want to go outside and play away match. You are settling for less. Never settle for what looks less than your father. Never said for what look less than your God. Destiny is not meant to be managed, but to be aligned with God's purpose. And I say in of God, destiny is not meant to be managed, but what, to be aligned with God's purpose. I love the song that says, I will never settle for less. For I know there's more in God. There's more in God. There was a man called Lot in the Bible. Lot with just by being the nephew of Abraham, you would have thought that, you know, everything that Abraham had, he too will have it. And Abraham meant well, I should have it. But when you look at Lot's, Lot's life, Lot always settled for less. Check his friends. When they look for, when they, find, they, when they found Lot, they found him in Sodom and Gomorrah, and they both said, look at this man that was just allowed to just stay in our city. He was only a friend with them. His friends were not Abraham's friends. Everywhere Abraham went, he built an altar. No record was made about our Lord. Building an altar for God. Always settling for less. And that's one of the mistakes a man can make to destroy his season of congregation. You settle for less. You settle for what look less than God. Number 14, this morning, child of God. In verse 14, the Bible says, when he has spent all, when he has spent all, there arose a famine. Then he went and went, joined himself to a citizen of that land. He waited until he spent all. The Bible says in verse 17, when he came to himself, ah, why did you wait till you spent everything? I should have just, when, when the money was going down, 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 I should have just stopped right there and said, you know what? I see I have 50%. Let me go back to my father. and say, father, the system of me, let me invest it. I have a generation waiting for me. I have children I have to give back to who will depend on me. Never, never, that's a mistake we make. Never finish your mistake before you realize it. Don't be too proud when you go to a place. You know you're making a mistake. Right in the middle. Stop yourself. And say, where well, this road I'm going to is not taking me anywhere. Running full speed in the wrong direction will not take you anywhere. 
Never wait to finish your mistake before you realize it. If it's halfway, say, you know what? I know I've made a mistake, but Lord, I'm making a new turn. One of the prayers we pray this morning. Say, Lord, make that prayer. Say, Lord, interrupt me in my mistakes. Lord, interrupt me in my mistakes. Interrupt me, oh God, in my mistakes before they become, they become, before they, they become fatal. Interrupt me, oh God, please. Before I just finish telling that lie, Lord, Holy Ghost, like, bah, stop, 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 don't lie that lie. Lord, interrupt me. Before I'm just thinking of sending that text message that is a lie, let my battle just run down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just let me, let me, let myself just yeah. freeze. Yeah. And people are like, God interrupted him. God, he said, he said, he said, don't worry. I'm like, I was one that I heard you, you don't sleep with Abraham's wife. I, kept, I know you're a good man, I kept you. But you won't sleep with another man's wife. God interrupted him. Mistakes that will become, that will crash your destiny. One of the prayers, because sometimes we're, 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 we're human beings. But God, before I make that mistake, that will destroy my family, that will destroy my career, that will destroy my business. Oh God, please interrupt me. That journey I'm going to, if you have to make my engine stop, Lord, interrupt me. Because this man, he waited till everything was over. Let me tell you, where he went to, there was nothing there for him. Because the father has already divided everything. And Jews are very strict people. They only gave his children brother everything. And so, what, when he came back, all those congratulations, it's just temporary congratulations, just to make him feel good. There was nothing there anymore for him. Because everything I was asking. But I said, all that I have is yours. So when he came, he only came to where the snowboarder is now combined everything. The snowboarder who was talking, saying, ah, he said, this, this, you, this one that went and did everything. Your father is still alive. He's talking about it like this. What of when your father not died? Ha! That snowboarder will, he will, he will. <laughs> if he's talking like this, why your father is still alive? Say that, look at that one. I went and squandered everything. Everything. Ah. Never wait till you squander everything before your, your, your senses become correct. Never wait. There are times there was a time in my life I was doing a program, you know, after three and a half years in college. Even me, I said, I know that this one, this one was not taking me anywhere. It was not taking me anywhere. It was not taking me anywhere. One day, ah, just one semester to be over. And you know, they say, just excuse my pigeon. They say, when the tortoise could not, uh, when tortoise could not cope, nobody told me, he advised himself. So, me, I look one day, I say, when I finish this program, what will I come out of it? I advised myself. I just went to one two year college and asked questions, asked questions, asked questions. And that was one of the best, in my career, that was one of the best decisions I made in my life. I didn't wait till I, I finished, they now, they now give me the graduation. And when I go, it now become prayer point. Before that thing become prayer point, stop halfway. <laughs> yes. Don't let your problem become prayer point. And there are some prayer points that are not just in Jesus' name. Go. This time go ahead not except by prayer and fasting. Don't let it get to the point where this time go ahead not. If it's halfway and it's correct yourself, the see will do. You, can, you know where you fall. You can see me going back like this. Right? Never finish your mistake before you realize it. I can make that prayer. Say, Lord, interrupt my mistakes. Interrupt my mistakes. Please don't let me complete my mistakes. Please don't let me complete my mistakes. Go ahead, make that prayer. Whether it's relationship or whatever it is, whether it's that marriage I'm trying to go into, and you know it's a mistake. You know it's a mistake. You know God has no hand in this. Whether it's that business, you know God has no hand in this. You are just going full throttle. Lord, interrupt my mistakes. Please don't let me complete my mistakes, oh God. Please, Lord. Don't let me complete my mistakes. Don't let me complete my mistakes. One of the other mistakes that truncates a man's destiny is when this boy got his own alarm, his own congratulations. In verse 13, he said, Not many is that the young son gathered everything, all his money, 
and journey to a far country, far place, where the cell phone will not work. So I they call him. At least, you know, where, where nobody knows him, where he can misbehave, where he can do what he wants. So do you know number five mistake you can make? He says, never be at a place where you cannot receive advice. The audience, I'm free, I'm free, I'm this. Never be at a place where nobody can talk to you. Always have a letter in your life. Lady J here, the day, God forbid, I start misbehaving. She knows who to call, one down. <laughs> she knows who to call, one down, because she knows who I submit to. Does your spouse know who you submit to? Even when I'm acting crazy, I know a call will come Oh, come back. Or stretching up. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. She knows who to call. She knows who is a mentor, somebody I submit to. She knows who can talk to me. No matter how angry I am, I will calm down because I submit to that person. Can you look at your husband and say, you know who? That's why he's like, who can talk to him? Can you look at your, your wife and say, you know somebody who can talk sense into her? Who can advise her? This boy moved to a far away country. If he was close by, I'm sure the father was saying, I know I've given you this money. If you like, waste everything. The father would have sent an SMS. Sir, I heard what you are doing, though. This is, this is not how I brought you up. You know, my mom would say, This is not how I brought you up. Oh. But he went to a far away place where nobody can see him. And wasted his congratulations. You want to keep your congratulations in? Never be at a place in life where nobody can congratulate you, can advise you. Let me just run this quickly. You know in verse 31, the father was saying this. He said, son, he said, son, the other son. He said, this your brother was dead. This your brother was dead, but now he's alive. Ha! Huh? He was dead, but now he's alive. So all that time, this boy was Enjoying with half of them, wasting money. He was, people saw it, even though he was bubbling, he was enjoying, but he was already dead. He was already dead. Even though he was alive, he was still breathing, he was already dead. Don't ever get to the point in life where even though we see you breathing, you're humming, you're thumping, everything, but you are dead to God's voice. Every voice of God is not noise in your head. There's so much noise in your head, in your, in your head that you can't hear the voice of God anymore. You become so busy. You know, I must hustle. This America must hustle. I must hustle. Pastor, we have to pay bills. We have to pay bills. You can't hear from God anymore. You never get to that point in life, child of God, where you are dead, even though you look soon to be alive. This is how they describe him. They say, this is your brother. He was dead. But now he's alive. So all that time he was dead. Until before he came back to his senses. Never be dead to directions. Never be dead to godly instructions. Can somebody pray this morning? To oh God. Oh Lord. Don't let me die. To your voice. To your direction. To your instruction. Somebody get no Lord. Don't let me die. To your voice. To your direction. To your instruction in Jesus' name. Amen. He was dead. One more thing, child of God, and I'll wrap up here. Do you know, I love the way the Bible says it. You know, so in verse, uh, let me see, uh, yes, verse 14. When he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land. So, when he had enough, there was no famine. <laughs> when he was easy, both hands to eat, everything, every change, he was eating every change. He was eating everything. There was no famine. Things were going fine. But when he has really spent everything, the farmer was just waiting in one corner, waiting for him. <laughs> Scarcity was waiting. All of a sudden, farmer came, and he had no capacity. So a change happened in the land. Why he was spending? Everybody was spending. But you think everybody is spending like you. 
Those that men, they also have backbone. They have something. They have, they have fall back. He did not have a fall back. So when the change came, the change crucified him. Famine came. Change came. And there was nothing for him to fall back to. Change came, but he had no capacity to manage change. So one of the mistakes you must never make tired of God is this. Never lack capacity to manage change. Never lack capacity to manage change. He looked like this. He was talking like this, but we knew. For some of us right now, COVID-19 revealed the emptiness of most people. Everything was okay. People were dressing up and going to work. Just going to work. Looking good and all the rest. But COVID-19, when they say now work from home, COVID-19 made us realize those who don't know, who don't know how to use computer. COVID-19 made us know those who don't know how to log into Zoom. It revealed the emptiness of most people. He had no capacity remaining. Change came. He had no capacity to manage the change. Whether you like it or not in life, change will come. Change is inevitable. So you must have what it takes to manage change. Like I said, just to say it again, that the change in your life will unveil your capacity. This, this will change like you lost. Next year, we don't know what will happen. What is going to happen? But here, NSPD, when COVID came, we realized that we must change. We must change here. So, some changes that are coming is only there to what? Take you to the next level. But you must have capacity. You must have to handle the change. And when the change comes, it will be your stepping stone. It not be not it not be downstairs. It will be what stepping so because there is downstairs so, and there is upstairs. He had no capacity. He has finished everything he had. One thing I will let you know is this: he was digging. Was he saying something? Do you know what he said? Why he came back to his sense again? He said, "Now nah, let me just go back to my father." And I'll just tell him, it, it sounds very good. I'll just tell him, I'm, I've sinned against you. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Let me just be as one of your higher servants. Because of the changes that has happened in my life, some by my mistake. So where he was going to is tomorrow. He was allowing his yesterday to define it. Child of God, please, never allow your experience of yesterday. Never be slave to your mistakes of yesterday. Never let you yes, your yesterday become your landlord to where God is taking you to. So where he was going, he never knew that the father would embrace him. He never knew that they would throw a party for him. But he was where he was going, he thought he was the Lord, Lord of his life. He thought he had it all figured out. And he was allowing his yesterday to define where God is taking him to. Again, I said, child of God, you must have made mistakes. We must have wasted some congratulations season. But we serve a God like the worship song we sang, who is merciful, who can see go all the way down and bring you back up. But again, I must say this. Let's be understanding. I must say this. Be prepared for where you are going to. Be prepared for where you are going to. Some of us need preparations. Daniel to stand before the king. He didn't know the, the king does. Any humble not stand before kings. Daniel had to be trained to know how to stand before kings. But let me ask you: if, if there's who's the richest man in the world right now? Tell me who's the richest man. Jeff Bezos. No. Elon Musk. If right now Elon Musk say I, I have a meeting with you, just come and I only have. 10 minutes with you. What will you tell the person? What will you tell him? What, what will you tell no, no, Let me ask you. What will you tell him? How many electric vehicles do you know? How many electric vehicles do you know? <laughs> you see, what about Toyota? <laughs> it's over at You're not prepared. If right now you got, you got the SMS from uh, maybe one country, 
They say, come and meet the president of this country and come and table your want. Will you go there and be table your poverty? I, I've been suffering, oh. I've been doing, you know how I've suffered. Ah, in fact, my mother died when I was young. They said, that, that. You think that's what mom wants to hear? What can you bring to the table right now? What proposal can you put? Are you prepared? When change comes, some people don't have anything. They, they're not prepared to manage the change. They're not prepared. So when famine comes, they have nothing to offer. And this is one of the destiny killers of people's congratulation. They're not prepared. So when change comes, it just it comes like it comes and it goes. And for some of us, one last now say this morning. That another you say, Oh, this is who I am, this is who I am. This is my experience. Never allow what you have experienced. Never allow your status make you grow low self-esteem. Never allow what you have gone through become the labor in your life to the point that there is no space for who God wants you to become. He never knew that there was going to be a party for him. He never knew that they were going to kill goats and everything for him. He was still trying to define himself by, well, if I go now, let me just be a house boy. Let me just go and do Joseph ministry. You know Joseph ministry, when you come to America and you go and stay in one place and, you know, you work seven days a week, 31 days a month, and they give one day off. He never knew that there was something better waiting for him. But the line is yesterday. So there was no space for what God wants to do for him. Child of God, pray this morning. I don't know where you have made mistake. You have squandered uh, destiny God has given to you. But he's a God of mercy. So we have the person. He's a God of mercy. We serve a God who makes all things new. We serve a God who makes all things new. We serve a God who makes all things new. Whether it's in your relationship, you have made mistakes. We serve a God who makes all things new. We serve a God who makes all things new. So God, this day, everywhere I've made mistakes that is dragging me down. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. If you can pray the word, pray those this one. Lord, have mercy. My destiny will not be swallowed. God's not better. Your destiny will not be swallowed. Call your name. Call your children's name. Even those that are made mistakes, your children. In the name of Jesus, your destiny will not be swallowed. Mercy will speak for you. Mercy will speak for my children. Mercy will speak. 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 I receive mercy today. Everywhere my destiny has been wasted, I receive mercy. I receive mercy. Show me mercy, Lord. Oh, my Kashina Buddha. 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 Yes, Lord. But I look beyond my mistakes. Oh, the cross is speaking for me today. Oh, 